Hey guys, it's me, Mario. Today we're going to continue Blaze, the Ice Dragon. Chapter 7, A Familiar Foe. How you guys doing today? Hope you're doing well. Let's get started. <coughs> Panic and pain choked Tom's throat as the dragon's length tightened around him. He tried to stand up, but he couldn't move his legs. The dragon had looped its snaky form around his lower body. Two gleaming eyes sat in the narrow head of, on a long neck, swung around to look straight at him. Tom stared as a forked tongue, black as night, flickered in and out between the Beast's bloodless reptilian lips. The dragon brought its head right up to Tom's face. Tom wanted to look away, but he could but he couldn't. There was something about that dragon's eyes. They weren't like any beasts he'd seen before. They looked human. Tom was sure he'd seen them well somewhere before. He tried to call out to Elena, but a thin uh, wheezing sound was the only noise Tom came from the, his mouth. But a thin wheezing sound was the only noise that came from his mouth. He writhed, temp attempting to push out his arms. He twisted his shoulders and drooped his hips, but not anything to loosen the dragon's death hold. As if in response, the scaly body contracted and Tom felt his ribs begin to crack. Storm snorted in the darkness, and Elena slept on, a few paces away, away from Tom and a <clears throat> a few paces away from Tom and uh, oblivious to the danger. He had to wake her up. If he died, she would be next. Tom saw his shield leaning up against a rock. If he could knock it over, the sound might awaken Elena. As the beast's muscular grip shif shifted again, Tom gasped as he tried to draw breath. The ice dragon's head didn't move. It was as if Blaze wanted to watch him suffocate to death. Then uh, Tom realized where he had seen those eyes before. Malville. Somehow the dark wizard was inside the beast, controlling him with his evil magic. With a mighty effort, Tom stretched his leg towards the shield, managing to slip his foot behind it, summoning the last vestiges, vestiges <coughs> summoning the last vestiges of his of his strength. He flickered the shield up into the air, and it clattered onto a small rock. Ellen was on her feet in an instant. Thomas's vision darkened, and his limbs grew weak. Was this the end? Suddenly, Blaze's death grip weakened, and air filled Thomas's lungs. He immediately saw the cause. One of Elena's... Arrows was 
sticking out from the dragon's body. Silver charged for forwards and tried to bite Blaze's side, but his teeth slid hopelessly off the thick scales. Hold on, Helena shouted, slinging another arrow to her bow. Tom wriggled free and rolled across the ground towards his sword. Ugh, that bitch. <clears throat> but before he could grab the hilt, the tentacle-like coil of Blaze's tail wrapped around his ankle. Tom looked over his shoulder and s and saw that he was being dragged towards the beast's gaping jaws. Oh, sorry. I kicked them. Here's the image of Blaze coiling uh, around Tom and Tom trying to reach his sword. Tom pulled himself. <clears throat> The dragon's teeth were a chilling green. <clears throat> Page 89. <clears throat> Tom looked over his shoulder and and saw that he was being dragged towards the beast's gaping jaws. The dragon's teeth were a chilling green, but his mouth was blood red. Tom pulled himself by his fingernails towards the sword. Feeling the sinews stretched to their limits. Limit. Finally, he locked his fingers around the hilt. As he was pulled backwards, he turned and swiped at the beast's head, but the blade passed straight through the dragon and uh, thwacked thwacked into the ground. Blaze's body was now see-through. He'd turned into a ghost. Tom felt himself swell with rage as he got to his feet. Like the other beasts on his on this quest, Blaze had the ability to transform from a real from real to ghostly form. <clears throat> I need to read that sentence again. Like the other beasts on this quest, Blaze had the ability to transform from a real from a real creature to a ghostly form in an instant. Tom swung from <clears throat> Tom swung with his sword again, trying to hack at the semi transparent scales. But once more his sword met no resistance and passed through the beast. The color rushed back into Blaze's body as he took on a flesh and blood form. Look! shouted Elena, point, pointing. The amulet piece. The amulet piece. Thomas's heart thumped as he saw that the amulet fragment was lodged between the scales where Blaze's body met his head. Tom hopped onto the onto a boulder and leaped towards the dragon, reaching for the for his prize. The beast lashed its tail out like a whip and Tom was struck in the chest and fell to the ground. He watched helplessly as the ice dragon looked took to the skies climbing steadily through the air, his tail whipping out behind a thrust, thrust him upwards. <clears throat> Silver howled at the departing beast while Storm neighed angrily. Blaze hovered above the volcano's crater again, and Melville's laughter boomed across the valley. Shaking the slopes. 
Come and catch me if you c if you dare. With those words, Blaze dipped his head and plunged into the heart of the crater. Tom got to his feet. It sounds like a trap, said Elena. The first pale light of dawn was breaking. Tom realized they hadn't slept for long. But he wasn't tired. Coming so close to death and may had made him feel more alive than ever. We've outsmarted Melville before. We'll outsmart him again. We must go after Blaze. Tom saw Storms' legs twitch, as if the horse was eager to start the day. You stay here, boy, said Tom. We should travel by foot on the volcano. Elena stroked Silver. And you will look after Storm, she said. <clears throat> Let's get that one. Waving goodbye to their animal companions, Tom and Elena set off up the path. The cold air cut right through them. Do you remember the last time we were here? asked Elena, as they climbed up the craggy rock face. Lava floated down from the crater's edge. Tom nodded as he scrambled onto a ledge. <clears throat> the villagers would have lost their homes, but we succeeded in our quest and saved Epos. Epos, said Elena, her voice grave. Where is she? Why is it so cold up here? Tom looked up towards the crater, where Epos's nest was. So far, he hadn't even felt her presence. His anger tightened like a knot inside him. If Mauville has harmed my friend, he said, he will pay. <clears throat> and that was chapter 7. Chapter 7, A Familiar Foe. <sighs> well, hope you guys enjoyed this chapter. And I hope I will see you on Thursday. I'm making this a bit late because my phone had to charge. I was using it a lot this morning, so it it had to charge before and But yeah. Hope you guys like, subscribe, and hit the bell if you guys are interested in more Beast Quest videos. And maybe another dragon in the future. Alright, bye-bye for now.